what do you make of the Bank of Japan's ability to push policy further from here, or is this one giant step with not much follow-up after this? I think it's a ladder. I mean, let's not forget that Bank of Japan do not have the deep pockets like that of ECB or the Fed, considering the fact that um, they themselves' current account is reaching almost 600 trillion yen. But also, uh, we have to consider the fact that uh, the Japanese economy itself is not really that strong. I mean, we're seeing inflation, but it's a cost push inflation, which is a totally different characteristic from that of the U.S. or U.K. Uh, so, you know, um, I don't think Bank of Japan will be willing to shoot their own foot by, you know, giving the message uh, to continuously raise the rate because our economy is not that buoyant. We've seen the wage decisions uh, having some impact here. Uh, the uh, decision to increase wages by 5.85% thanks to negotiations by the, the large labor union there in Japan. What implications do you think that wage increase will have? Because some fear that this just means more money saved, not spent, not contributing to inflation. Um, I kind of share that anxiety, to be perfectly honest with you. And the reason is, is that the conservative nature of the Japanese, you know, consumers. In the past, the government have been throwing cash in the face of the Japanese, but basically they do not increase their spending. Their propensity to spend is not going to limp up. Uh, it goes to savings, as you just noted. So that tends to happen quite a lot, um, except that, you know, this 5.2% uh, increase is very much led by the exporters who are the representative of Japan. And uh, the fact is that many of these companies have flourished with, you know, record high profits. So, you know, as far as job security is concerned, which is the first prerequisite for the Japanese to start spending, uh, the, you know, the, the table is set almost, I would say. And uh, from that point of view, I think private concession will be a little bit better off, but you know, certainly not buoyant to an extent where, you know, you find in areas like United States. Yeah, I mean, uh, Sajira, good morning to you. I mean, I was thinking the same thing. Just what if, you know, demand actually doesn't come back uh, despite those wage increases then? I mean, what is that? Where does that leave the BOJ from here? Well, you know, BOJ has to sustain, I think, the low interest rate policy until we see the cycle that turning around. For example, we have capital expenditure spending by the corporation doing fairly well. But if you look at the content of their investment, it's a little bit backpedaling uh, in the sense that it's very defensive into areas like, you know, rationalization. It's not, you know, a kind of investment that calls for further multiplier to the economy. So if we start to seeing these kind of, you know, forward moving type of investments, uh, you know, which basically will induce, you know, more investment, then I think think the Japanese consumers will feel safe to start spending. Uh, so, you know, I think we have to see the cycle of the corporate activities first. Japanese consumers are so conservative to an extent that, you know, they wouldn't be willing to spend unless they can see the confirmation that, you know, their job security is going to be very stable in the future. Yeah. Um, what about the, the curbing then of yen weakness? Do you think that that comes into play here or do we wait pretty much for the comments then from Kazuo Ueda a little bit later on? Uh, that's another very good question, I think, because, well, it's a very delicate point that Bank of Japan has to play with. I mean, weakening the yen may benefit the exporters, but especially under conditions where, you, where we're getting cost-push inflation, you know, um, and considering, you know, our vulnerability to, you know, uh, um, external prices, particularly natural resources, obviously weakening yen could eventually start hurting, you know, our economy like a body blow. So excessive weakening yen is something that, you know, Bank of Japan, or I should say Minister of Finance, would like to halt. Uh, so, you know, giving a message that we'll be raising a rate is wrong, but at the same time, you know, excessive weakening of the yen is not something that, you know, uh, we'd like to see. So this is a very delicate, difficult point, I think, that both of Bank of Japan and Mr. Finance is at.